in your Bibles this evening. If you turn with us over to Luke's Gospel, chapter number 24. It has been a joy to be with you in these days. My, my, I enjoyed the choir singing tonight. These young ladies that's taken time out of their week to come and be a blessing to us tonight. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 24. When you get there, say amen tonight. If you have the Word of God in your hand, you have the greatest thing that you've had in your hand all day. For within it contains the truth that will stand when this world is burning. Somebody, somebody said about revival. It is Tuesday night revival. You know, I don't want to go through just another service. I enjoy going to church. I love being at church when the Lord's at the church. But wouldn't it be wonderful tonight if we left this place in a different way than how we came? Revival simply means of this definition means the improvement in the condition or strength of something. Revival is the improvement in the condition or the strength of something. I think we all could stand some improvement in our life tonight. We find this sacred text in Luke's Gospel of chapter 24. You're very familiar within the writings here in the Gospel of Luke. They went to the tomb to try to find the Lord. So we all know he wasn't there. They says he's not here for he's risen. I'm glad we've got a God that went to Calvary, but I'm glad tonight that on the third day he got out of the grave. You see, Buddha and Confucius has never been able to accomplish that feat. But our Lord, he arose over death, hell, and the grave. They go there and they're mighty perplexed. I find myself that way in life a lot. Even though God has told me things in the Word and when it comes to pass, I find myself very perplexed at the situation. So we pick up now in verse 13. Two of these are leaving, and uh, they're leaving the group of the disciples, and they're headed on a road home. We know it as the Emmaus Road experience. So we pick up in Luke 24 and 13, and behold, Two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs or some seven miles. They talked together these things which had happened. It came to pass that while they communed together and they reasoned, underline that in your Bible, they, they reasoned. Look what Jesus does. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding. They should not know him. And he said unto them, look what it says. What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad. One of them whose name was Cleopas answering and said to him, Aren't thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? He said unto them, What things? They said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty deed, word before God and all the people, 
how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and they've crucified him. Verse 21, watch this, but we trusted. We trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. They found not his body. They came saying that they had seen a vision of angels which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said to him that they saw not. Then he said unto them, O oh, fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ suffered, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I want to say time out tonight before I get on preaching. Jesus preached about Jesus, and I think it's always right to preach about Jesus. If Jesus preached about Jesus, you'll never go wrong preaching about Jesus. They drew nigh to the village where they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. They constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it's toward evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he said at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them, and their eyes were open. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, while he opened unto us the scriptures? They arose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord's risen indeed and have appeared to Simon. Verse 35, they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you that we can open the word of God to see your writings tonight. Would you open our eyes to the scripture as you did these? Would you help us to see these truths tonight that this world knows little about. Would you help us, your people? Would you help every preacher that's here tonight? God, every mama and daddy, every child, help this great church, these other churches around. Help our church at home. Help our nation, we pray tonight. In Jesus' name I pray and I ask you, amen and amen. I won't preach very long tonight. But I would like to share with you a few truths that I find, and I'd like to give you the title out of verse 32 of the sermon tonight. They said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? I, I want to preach on this subject tonight, on losing the fire on the way home. Losing the fire on the way home. I've noticed in my life when the Lord first saved me, it was the, one of the most greatest experiences that I've ever experienced in my life or the greatest experience. When God called me to preach, I mean, it was, it was so close to it, but I knew the day the Lord saved me, what an experience and what a joy filled my heart 
What a relief that my heart and my soul experienced. And I noticed there was something begin to, to build up inside of me. There was a fire burning inside of me. I think a lot of times as we're Christians and we get older in the Lord or we can be younger in the Lord tonight, we can always go back to a time and a place where the Lord saved us. We'll all have to agree how great that was. I can remember I got on the phone. I began to call nearly everybody I knew. The Lord saved me. The, the Lord saved me. I'd get up in the choir on Sunday, and my goodness, people would look at me, you know, like, what's his issue? I got saved. I, I got somebody living in me now that I'd never had living in me. And, and I'm telling you, the, the thrill was wonderful the day that the Lord saved Somebody, somebody said this. Well, salvation's not by feeling. I realize that salvation is by grace through faith, but I'm glad I got some feeling that come with Jesus tonight. I'm glad he moves around in my heart. I'm glad he set up housekeeping in my soul. And I'm bought with a price. I'm not my own. I'm glad he moves around on the inside of me from time to time. And so I think we find ourselves a lot like these two on the Emmaus Road. There was a time fire burned in our heart, but it's got real low. They're going back home. And I want to remind you tonight, as this choir absolutely done a phenomenal job singing about going to heaven. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. Are you going to heaven tonight? This auditorium is filled with people. Do you know that your name is written down yonder in glory land world tonight? But we find ourselves like these on the road to Emmaus. The fire has dwindled down. It is burning low, maybe a spark or an ember. But when they meet Jesus and Jesus opens unto them the scripture, that fire began to burn inside again. Amen. May God open our eyes tonight to the scriptures. You may be cold in heart. You may be wounded. You may be weary in your travel, but... There's nobody like Jesus and there's nothing like the Word of God that will put a fire back in our heart. Yeah. I thought a lot of times if I could get a new toy, yeah. boy, that'd bring me happiness. My wife's got a closet full of shoes and pocketbooks, but the shine went off of all of it. Somebody save me. And yeah. Boy, if I can get this toy or this trinket, it'll make me happy. But I declare, everything I've ever got materially in this old world, God is not the shine off of it. Because you know, he wants to shine the brightest. And I'm glad that he that lives in us tonight is worthy of all of our praise. Tonight, I'd like to say by simply a way of outline in this text, and I'll be done preaching. Notice, first of all, losing the fire on the way home. There are some folks on the way home. It's very important that we see this in verse 13 through 15. Some folks on the way home, look, first of all, you find them walking. They Two of them went that same day. Well, how do you know there's walking, preacher? Well, they wouldn't know jet airplanes in that day. Somebody say amen. <laughs> they was walking. I'm, I'm glad I've been able to walk with some folks on the way home. To, two of my uh, favorite people in the world here tonight, some of my great friends, Brother Larry Stone, Brother Bill Watson, I've known them through years, and uh, Brother Tim, it's just a joy to walk with some folks on the way home. Isn't it a blessing that God's put some folks in your pathway of life to let you walk on the way home? And honey, I'm headed home tonight. This old world's not my home, but I'm glad I'm headed to glory land world. Hallelujah. You'll notice there's some folks on the way home. They're walking, and then they're a lot like me and you in verse 14. They're talking. You'll see this. They talk together of all these things which had happened. Boy, that'd keep us busy in this old crazy world, wouldn't it? 
I used to watch Fox News all the time, but I got so mean my church couldn't take it. Somebody say amen. <laughs> so I started reading my Bible. The folks on the way home, we find them walking and talking, but then I find somebody else there, somebody stalking. Look what happens. The Bible said in verse 15, came to pass that while they communed together, and here's our word, and reason. they trying to reason things out. Have you ever had anything happen in your life and you tried to reason things out? Reasoning will keep you real busy and take you no place tonight. Oh, a reason. Preacher, why? I don't know why. I don't know why. Some of the greatest people that's ever walked in this world, I get to pastor them people. I've been to the graveyards. I've been to the hospitals. I've been to the birthday parties. I've been to the ball games. I've been to the church. I've walked with these people and times has happened in their life and they find themselves trying to reason why these things happen. Tonight, be careful. The devil will keep you busy trying to reason things out. There's a verse in our Bible, for we know that all things work together for good to those that love God. We must trust him in all situations. So there are some folks on the way home. But then secondly, you'll notice in this text, there are some facts on the way home. In verse 17, they're doing something. You'll notice, first of all, the facts on the way home. Remember this, don't mingle with discouraging talk. He said to them, what communications are these you have one another as you walk and are sad? They just walking together, talking about all this discouraging talk. You ever seen anybody meet you out on the front door steps of the church and you say, oh, mercy, not today, Lord. <laughs> Lord, spare me this morning. Let me go in the other door. Somebody say me. But you know, man, when they see they go unload how bad life is. Let me tell you, I could write you a story on heartbreaks, but I ain't got no bad story to tell tonight. Jesus has been so good to me. Don't mingle with discouraging talk. Don't be a drain on people's life. Be a faucet. Don't run to your preacher and tell him all the trouble Sunday morning. He's trying to get the mind of God for you. My poor wife, you know what she'll do? And I realize I pastor the edge of Alabama and Georgia, and it's a tough part of the country. I realize that. But my wife, Brother Tim, she'll go in my study. We have men's prayer room, and she'll come out about 5 T. I I said, honey, why would you do that? She said, because, honey, I want to get my mind on worship this morning. I just don't want to be loaded down with all of them troubles. Respect people and be good to people. Remember, your preacher needs to enjoy church and his wife needs to enjoy church. and Your leadership needs to enjoy church. Your Sunday school teachers need to enjoy. I know we got all issues and thank the Lord I've got some men. Sometimes I'll call Brother Stone and I'll just whine and whine. My goodness, every time somebody sees us, we ought not be down on Jesus. And well, somebody crank the truck. I'm going to have to leave in a minute. Amen. Don't mingle with discouraging talk. Number two, verse 18, don't major on disturbing things. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to him, Aren't thou a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Don't major on disturbing things. I love what Jesus said. He said to him, What things? <laughs> ah. Boy, Jesus knows how to give the right answer, don't he? What things? What y'all talking about? 
verse 21, not only don't mingle with discouraging talk, talk about facts on the way home. Don't major on disturbing things, but look thirdly, don't meditate on disrupting thoughts, verse 21. Underline this and look what they said. But we trusted that it had been. I find a lot of times in our life, you'll notice that this word trusted is in past tense. They're no longer trusting. It's that something that was in their past but not in their present. They were trusting, but now they're not trusting. I wonder, are you, have you quit trusting because things didn't work out the way you thought it to be tonight? I can say this by all honesty and with all sincerity. When God changes our plans at the time, it's hard to see the benefits. But God's always got the best in mind. I don't understand it all, but I know this through experience. When the detours have happened in my life and when things didn't work out the way I thought they were supposed to, I want to say something tonight in closing. God is faithful. But we trust it. It sounds like to me they're real discouraged tonight. You may be sitting here this evening. Lord, I thought it would have been this way. Lord, I had it planned out this way. Young preachers, let me give you some good advice from a pastor tonight. Write all of your plans and your itinerary in pencil because you may erase half of it. I've seen God do things in my life and the life of our people that was so rearranging. And, and some are in the process right now. They, they really can't see the good of it all. But I want to remind you, God has the best for us on His heart. I'm glad I'm not my own. I'm glad I don't set my itinerary. And tonight... Losing the fire on the way home, and it's something that they're going home and they've lost this fire. Jesus comes to them, so it takes me to my third point. Not only do we see the folks on the way home and the facts on the way home, look at your Bible. There's a friend on the way home. Jesus himself drew near. <clears throat> they didn't wave a flag, they didn't shoot a flag. Jesus just come right up into their world. You know, I've noticed this. They didn't even know who he was. So many times in life when we're so distressed and distracted and we're trying to reason things out, Jesus is beside us and we never even know it. You remember when Mary was at the tomb weeping? She supposed him to have been the gardener. He was there the whole time. There's been times in my life's lowest moments, Jesus has always been there. It might have been there through a little child. It might have been there through a saint of God. Some way, somehow, God is always going to prove his self. So Jesus draws near. The Bible said that their eyes were holding. They didn't know who he was. They had no perception that this was Jesus. So now something happens. Not only is there the folks on the way home, facts on the way home, the friend on the way home, but I want to say lastly tonight, there's a fascination on the way home. Look in verse 30. He walks with them as they start starts to get dark. There's seven miles. I like what the old writer said today that I read after. He said, you know, when Jesus is walking with you through the day, he sure does make the day a lot shorter. Yeah. 
A lot of times at home, I get so busy, I jump in that Kubota tractor, start all this bush hogging, all this, this process of keeping our place where it needs to be. And I think I didn't even go in my altar and pray this morning. I'll cut that old tractor off and climb out of that cab. And I'll go to talking to the Lord and jump back in that cab mash that CD player and listen to some of that good music. Somebody say amen. amen. You say, we well, ought not have a CD on a tractor. I do, and I enjoy it. Somebody say amen. amen. And boy, the day goes a lot better when Jesus is involved. Amen. But you'll notice there's a friend on the way home. He comes and he peers to them. Now, this fascination on the way home, the last point tonight, I want you to notice this. Remember this. They found their self-reasoning. Reasoning. Jesus comes to it. So we pick it up now in verse number 30. Let's look in verse 29, or let's get 28. They drew nigh to the village where they went and made as though he would have gone further. And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us for us toward evening, the day is far spent. They still don't know it's Jesus. They just knew that they sure did like his company. Watch this. He went in the tower with them and he does something. Fascination on the way home. Came to pass as he said at meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were open. Now let me ask you this. Why is verse 35 in our Bible? They go back and they tell the disciples what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Why didn't they know him before he broke the bread? It's there in our text. He wants us to know that they found out who he was in the breaking of that bread. Notice, first of all, where he sat. He sat with them. They asked him to come in the house. I sure am glad Jesus will come where he's wanted tonight. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus down in my house. I, I need him to come around where I live and where my children are, where we go to church. I need the Lord to come inside tonight. Look what he said. Look what he shared. He took bread and he did something. The Bible says specifically that he blessed it and he broke it. You see, everything that he blesses, he breaks. You may wonder why that you're being broken in life. It's because that you're going to be so blessed by your brokenness. One of the greatest days in my life is when God broke me. I'm more convinced tonight of John 15 where he said, Without me, you can do nothing. It is a process, but I sure am glad that God has broken me in the pathway of life. I say, Lord, I can't do it, but I know you can do anything. He blessed it, then he broke it. Not only where he sat with them, what he shared with them, but look what he showed them. Why was their eyes open when he broke that bread? They didn't know who he was till now. But when Jesus simply took that bread, and he took that bread and he broke it, they seen those nail-scarred hands. They knew it was the Lord. You see, you don't break bread like this. You break it like this. And when they seen those nail-scarred hands, have you ever seen them nail-scarred hands? Do you remember Thomas in the upper room? He wasn't there when the Lord came that Sunday. Oh, doubting Thomas, the disciple said, Man, you missed it. The Lord come by. You missed it, Thomas. Wonder where he was. The Bible said eight days later, Jesus come back by. 
You know what Thomas told them boys? He said, I'll not believe it lest I put my finger in the print of his hands in John 20. Amen. Put my hand in his side. Jesus, come walk in. Watch this. The door's closed again. Yeah. You see, the Lord won't allow the world to see real special things. Had the door closed. But his young ones is gathered together. Thomas said, I'll not believe. And the Lord walks in. He said, hey, Thomas, I heard what you said eight days ago. He said, put your finger in the print of my hands. Put your hand in my side. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Jesus said, blessed are those that believe and not have seen me. Tonight, can I tell you this at the end of this message? Notice what they do now when that fire begins to build in their heart. First of all, it brought unity. They rose up together and they started back down the same road they just come down but they went down with a different attitude. You know why? They're no longer reasoning. You know what's happened? They've had a revelation. They've seen who the Lord is. And would that help us tonight in our reasoning out, to quit trying to reason out life's experiences and have a revelation about what Jesus has done for us tonight? So they said, my goodness, didn't our hearts burn within us while he opened us the scriptures and the way? That fire's burning back. Now watch this. This fire brings unity. They, they go back together. They're, they're going back to Jerusalem. They're going to meet those disciples. And I want to say that this fire, when it's brought back, not only does it bring unity, but look in verse 33, it brings urgency. And they rose up the same hour returned to Jerusalem and found the leaven gathered together and them that were with it. Wouldn't it be a blessing tonight if we'd get the fire back in our hearts so it'd bring great unity in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care how many pastors is here tonight. I wish you could see 10,000 saved a year. I want you to know something. I'm for you tonight. Mom and daddies, the church is for you. We need everyone that's here tonight. You're so important in the family of Christ. And how we need to be unified going in one direction. But not only did this being filled with fire again bring unity, you'll notice that undoubtedly it brought an urgency. They went back to tell somebody that Jesus had risen. And now, look what happens the last place I read. Not only does it bring unity and urgency, but it brings an unction. Verse 36, And as they thus spake, look what happens. Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. If our piano player could come tonight, if that's okay with our pastor. Preachers, Jeremiah said, I wasn't going to say no more about the Lord, but his word rose up in my heart as a burning fire. Mom and daddies, wouldn't it be a blessing tonight if them embers that's way down in your heart, if the good Holy Ghost would just fan that flame a little bit and let it go to burning again. You remember when you got excited about Jesus? You remember how good he was to you when you got saved? How precious that was? And now whatever process it's been through many years, that fire has dwindled to just an ember. Church, if we've ever needed revival, fire, real fire, burning in our hearts, I'm going back home, Lord willing, Thursday. There'll be four little old grand young'uns. They'll meet me at the door. You know what they'll say? Pop, 
we missed you. Pop, did you preach good? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. They need somebody. It's got a fire burning in their heart. To tell them how good Jesus has been. You may come this way defeated tonight. But if the Lord would do something to your heart, you could go back down the same pathway in a different way. They went back with a message. The Lord has risen indeed. And isn't that something, church? When they started saying that, Jesus stood by. Preachers, if we've ever needed unction, may we be preachers that don't put people to sleep and that freeze their hearts. but will challenge them for their heart to burn again. Our altar's open tonight. I'm done preaching. Would you simply mind the Lord tonight?